Hi, new buddies. Like, it's a special club. So, yesterday, I got on one of my Facebook groups, you know, because I was struggling with, uh, I was like, why do I feel like I need somebody? You know, like, why is that so important for me to have somebody? And I was like, you know, am I just like a, a drug addict? You know, is this withdrawal? You know, does it pass? So I asked a bunch of other INFJ women. And one told me, you know, to check out this YouTube page of this, uh, this lady who's a life coach. Um, I believe it's Lisa A. Romano. Um, and she's, she's like, the girl's like, you know, it sounds like you might be codependent. And I've heard that term before. Nobody's ever said I am. And so I pull up this video and I'm like, you know, instantly she's got me. So much of what she said. I was just blown away. So I decided in lieu of reading fiction like I normally do, that I would uh, read books. I would look on uh, Kindle Unlimited and, and see what they've got about codependency. And I pick up this book called uh, I'm Not Crazy, I'm Codependent. And I'm reading this lady's story as, as she's going through the various things. And I'm, I'm actually going to go over these things. Because uh, anyone who watches this, if if they're going through the same thing, they'll this will be their, like, aha moment. Um, if they know me, uh, this might be, a like, an aha moment as to, oh... That's why she's like that. Um, in the past, I've, I, like, not too long ago, I remember writing to one of my pen pals, which, <laughs> me having the pen pals should make sense to other codependents. <laughs> um, I remember saying, you know, like, man, this, is, this just all turns to shit. You know, and I have to believe that it's, it's me because I'm the common denominator, you know, which a lot of codependents don't, don't really think, you know, I'm, I mean, we, we think we're the problem, but at the same time, we don't, or at least that's what I read is that, you know, we'll be like, but I'm nice. I, I do everything that they want me to. And, you know, I'm always, always, always trying you know, and it just doesn't dawn on a lot of, a lot of people that they are the common denominator and that that's the problem, you know, that, that, hey, you need to, uh, reflect on, okay, what goes on every time, you know, and, um, a lot of people on the, the chat room, and I've had therapists tell me the same thing. You're very self-aware. I've always had to be, you know, but there are times, you know, like, like with this stuff, you know, I was kind of floored with some of the stuff this lady said that I was like, wow, you know, that is totally me. You know, like um, on the video, the, the this one lady was like, you know, hey, you know, your mom calls and says, I need to go to the doctor. And a codependent, or, well, a codependent, if your mom says, I've got a doctor's appointment today. Oh, do, do you need me to give you a ride? You know, that's codependents automatically, you know, like, even though mom's got a car, mom can drive herself, codependents like, oh, do, do you want me to come hang out? Do you want me to, you know, uh, mom says, I need a ride. A codependent is going to say, well, I had other stuff to do, but you know what? You're more important. 
So I'm going to drop everything. You know, I'm not going to say, well, why don't you call somebody else? You know, if you would have gotten a hold of me a few days ago, blah, blah, blah. You know, we normally just like feel guilty about having to say no. And, um, I, I was reading all this stuff and, and like I said, I'm going to go into it in a minute. I am I'm so wrong about so many things. And, you know, I always, always questioned, am I actually a nice person? Am I really? And reading about codependency strengthens that, am I really a nice person? <laughs> because in the video that Lisa made, she kept saying, how do I feel about that? How do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? And a lot of times I don't know. Like, how does this make me feel? How does this make me feel? And I don't even really process it. You know, like, like a lot of times if I do think about how does this make me feel, it's oh, good or bad. You know, good feeling, roll with it. Bad feeling, change. You know, switch gears. Um, so, I'm going to go into, like, the notes I took last night. Now, some of these, I... If I'm being honest, which I should be, <laughs> um, I, you know, I was, like going to say, oh, well, I'm going to write these down and they're not, you know, like I'm going to say, oh, well, they're not all necessarily about me. They're all about me. That's why I wrote them down. <laughs> I'm not going to lie even. Um, I'm just going to say this is me. So let me turn around here rather than move the book, <laughs> the notebook, right? Um, okay. So codependents typically suffer from a myriad of of other things, uh, low self-worth, which ends up being people pleasing. And, and I've seen that a lot, you know, like, Oh, I'm a real people pleaser. Is it healthy though? You know, um, repression, fear of speaking up in case there's punishment or rejection. So into them, you know, like, I'll just be silent um obsession when your mind can't stop ruminating or rationalizing so that's uh, overthinking guilty controlling everything and everyone is their responsibility to fix denial can't see that they're the problem um I actually did write that one down when I've actually seen myself as the problem. Uh, poor communication. Can't say or even know how they feel. Weak boundaries. Um, and letting others manipulate them. Uh, I've always said, like, there are some boundaries that I don't cross. But most of my boundaries that I say, oh, well, you know, like, like, uh, please get your dog off of me. You know, like, I don't like him like that. It'll be like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna handle this. Because they're not controlling their dog. So, okay. I don't want to upset them, so I'm going to try to be okay with this. That's a boundary. Like, if they know that you got triggers about it, you know, they should be controlling their dog. Um, I can't count how many times my friend's dog, Sassy, would be all over me. And, and I mean, I'm terrified of Sassy to a degree because Sassy's a big-ass fucking pit bull, which I, I think pit bulls, are, pit bulls are just so cute. And, and I know that this one was a good girl, you know, but... But still, you know, I was always, like, worried about this dog and hoping that I didn't get a whiff of her dog smell because then I'd just sit there and be like, Egh. you know, just triggered. Okay, <laughs> on to the next thing. 
lack of trust uh, can't relax in a relationship like uh, somebody who's codependent a lot of times cannot just be themselves it's always like okay is is everything good here can I do this can I do that can I say this can I say that anger unexpressed mostly but constant I think at a young age I learned to to really just shove that to the side because I, I remember seeing like are you angry a lot as a question are you angry a lot am I because I mean I think I kind of am but I don't feel it <laughs> um, sexual problems high stress levels prevent enjoyment and a lot of times somebody will have sex that they're like I don't really feel like it but okay you want to let's go um, the author after going through all that went through three core beliefs that, that she had felt so I felt that these were important to write down I totally get where she's coming from my happiness depending on whether or not everyone around me was appeased and approved of me no matter what it cost me in terms of my own well-being or self-respect number two I was responsible for fixing everyone and their problems number three I was bad and terrified of rejection the result of all this was I had no idea who I really was or what I wanted but rather I saw myself as an extension of whoever it was I was trying to appease at the moment um, a lot of people with BPD will talk about wearing masks codependency is a complete mask um, I think at some point uh, say something about uh, false self um, I'm very much into the false self um, then I took like a little quiz you know and, and and most of the questions were pretty easy to answer yes or no about my my home life growing up and then I came across did you feel loved and I, I was stumped I kept going yes no yeah no the kind of love I felt what, what I called love I know was not love but at the same time it was like I, I didn't know anything different and and that was love to me and, and moving on in my future you know the bad the the bullshit is so related to what love was to me as a child and that's not really love but I loved those people you know I loved my parents but I shouldn't have it was a tricky question for me to answer what did I do <laughs> I marked out yes no yes no um, and eventually said yes um, four issues or enemies of a healthy life the role of addiction uh, boundaries go from one extreme to another uh, people are either in a family of addiction people are either too close or so distant and she went into that sometimes the addiction dynamic there may not be an active addict in your household it might be that that behavior that codependency behavior was developed from your grandpa or your great-grandpa being an alcoholic because they say that uh, codependency is contagious your kids catch it so even if the addiction 
is not in your child's household. The behavior that they learned in that household is passed down generation to generation because in that household children are responsible for for feelings you know they're responsible for how mom or dad feels how do they feel how do they feel how do they feel it ain't about how do I feel it's about how do they feel um, rules extremes again no rules or rigidness and um, loss of self dominated by automatic emotional response when you are in a volatile household you learn how to react you know you, you learn how to read how somebody is and that's how you move forward like you do not want to rock the boat and I thought this was kind of neat um, and I thought about my own my own family and and my second family the firstborn is the golden child they're perfect they're responsible you know they're 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 good second child is the scapegoat they tend to rebel um, they tend to be the one who's always guilty the baby is the mascot or clown always looking for a laugh um, that's if you know you got more than two because uh, I, I don't feel like I was the mascot the mascot or clown um, in my family but I was definitely the scapegoat at least that's how it felt and my brother was the golden child um, the second thing that works against a healthy life is the role of abuse many victims don't see themselves as abused victims cannot feel genuine happiness victims feelings are hurt easily they isolate often in order to escape or in order to cope sorry victims have low self-esteem victims self-sabotage when things are good like if they start to feel comfortable it's time to tear it down because something bad's gonna happen so we want to get ahead of it um, feeling bad dirty embarrassed guilty some develop compulsive behaviors have violent dreams suicidal abuse can also be created by what's not done in a house such as withholding affection number three as the enemy of a healthy life the role of shame shame is a being wound Guilt says I've done something wrong. Shame says there's something wrong with me. Guilt says I've made a mistake. Shame says I am a mistake. The false self forms a defensive mask which distracts from the pain and the inner loneliness of the true self. Uh, the false self. Did I write this down? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know you've come from a shame-based origin when you have abandonment issues, loneliness, thought disorders, numbed out, highly controlling, perfectionism, intimacy issues, secretive, poor communication style, lack of coping skills, compulsive, addictive, uh, spiritually bankrupt. And then number four, as to the the uh, unhealthy life, the role of trauma. Whether it's something bad, actually, something physically bad happened to you, or mentally bad. And um, there's a Dr. Levin wrote a book about the physical. Uh, 
the physical symptoms of trauma, things that, that happen during, shortly after, months after, years after, decades after. Trauma has a lasting effect. And, you know, as I'm reading all this stuff about codependency, I see it in my kids. That they learned it um, from me. This whole, oh, no, 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 you're upset, you're upset, you're upset, you're upset. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean to upset you. Like, I, I've always told people, if what I say offends you, I did not mean to offend you. Like, conflict. Oh, no. And that's kind of a dead giveaway that I am a codependent person. That I, you know, I don't want to disrupt any of that shit. And, and um, I will say no to some things. There are times when I do, but normally that no has to do more with my fear of an anxiety attack outweighing my fear of disappointing you, my fear of saying no just because I don't want to do something because I'm like, I don't want to watch the game. I want to read my book or I want to do this. Why don't you just watch the game? You do you. It, it never occurs to me when somebody's like, come on, let's go do this. I really want you there. It never occurs to me to say, well, how about we do something I want to do? Like, if you really want to spend time with me, why does it have to be about where you want to be all the time? Like, like, I'm willing to give you, like, me going to a football game if you'll give me a trip to Goodwill, you know, why does it always have to be, you know, and, and a lot of, one of the big things with codependency is a, a quote I saw. I will set myself on fire to keep you warm. Well, I always add to that. Why would you let me? And that's the thing, people don't realize like, like, I guess that I'm not going to say that they're people, you know, that everybody that a codependent comes across is somebody who, like, just enjoys having somebody do everything, you know, to, to keep them comfortable. You know, that that person is always trying to keep them comfortable, that they don't ever think about, what am I doing to keep them comfortable? And trust I have thought about this many times. What are you doing to keep me comfortable? You know, who's rubbing my back? Who's doing this for me? Who's doing this for me? Who's doing this for me? Nobody. And and telling them, telling these people like, hey, why aren't you doing this? I always feel like I'm being selfish. You know, like I'm being like, well, why don't you do this for me? Or I shouldn't have to ask. Like, I don't want them to do something that they don't just automatically want to do. You know, I don't want to be needy. I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that, you know. And, um, so that's what I did last night was I, I like, looked at that. And I not only have to heal myself, which is going to be a battle in and of itself because telling somebody like no I don't want to no I got plans no I don't care you know or not care no I'm not going to stop what I'm doing cuz you don't like it this is my time this is my life I am not physically hurting you I am not taking money from you I am not doing anything to you. Your emotions are not my responsibility. That's going to be rough on me. 
because that is the programming that is in my head and there's like this cycle the lady on on YouTube called it like a riptide and you're supposed to be on this surfboard and you're supposed to stay on top of the ocean and your programming is the riptide and you've got to keep yourself from going down in the riptide I've been living in the riptide my whole fucking life and you know and I, I see a major struggle but I also see that I have to do this not just for me for me to live my best life but I have to do this so I can help my kids so I can help them not struggle not be 43 years old and and figuring out oh, my life sucks and it's and it's because I learned this behavior and this behavior was never good for me this behavior is horrible you know I don't want them to, to feel like that I don't want them to waste so much of their life pleasing people or trying to please people you know to where they forget about themselves and they forget who they are and and go did I ever really know because I don't really know who I ever was and what I want I don't because my wants change with whoever I'm trying to appease whoever I'm trying to be good with my wants change I just want to be perfect and that's not a way to live so I have to do this not just for me but so I can help them because they grew up and learned it and I don't want this for them I really don't I don't want this for my grandchildren that will come Mm -mm. I want it to stop with me which it can't really stop with me but I want it to stop with my kids plain and simple because I picked somebody that was similar to my dad my kids grew up in a household similar to mine I want better for them So that's today. As always, every moment is an opportunity to turn it around. That's what I'm working on. Um, I hope that you have a great day. I hope you find a reason to smile. Bye.